God bless. Um, this is Mark Anthony DeBello. Uh, today is May the 31st, 2024. I'm recording this message. I already recorded it twice. I don't know if it um, got saved or I think it was too lengthy. Um, but I just wanted to give an update on some spiritual matters, um, a couple of preaching and teachings, and then what's going on in the life of my daddy who died this day, two months ago. And also talk about my life and then a little bit about what's going on in the United States here where I am. And um, uh, the couple teaching lessons I want to give is, I've written them before, but the same way the devil got kicked out of heaven for having pride and wanting to be like or overpower God, it's just in, in instinctual and in, in a characteristic of all beings um, made of a creator. It happens with, you know, the animal kingdom and God. It happens with man and, or women and God. It happens especially with women between them and men. It even happens with sons to their fathers and uh, second-born sons or brothers to their older brothers. And I've experienced all of them. Um, but it's not the way it's supposed to be. That's why, again, the devil got kicked out, because he tried to be equal to God and then eventually would overpower God. Um, and that pride is sinful and totally ungodly. And I see it a lot, especially in this age of feminism and female self-empowerment. And empowerment happens with women, with men, uh, especially with wives to their husbands. And even I see it in governments um, and certainly in my own life. The second lesson I wanted to teach about is deceit, and I've said this or written it before many times. The devil, he's crafty and cunning. He's, you know, he knows, and, and like the most obvious lie is if like, for example, I thought about this, if I told you this scarf was green, you'd know that's a lie, right? It's white, that's an obvious lie. But the three lies that the devil really tells, or at least the two others that are, are really d demonic are, if for instance, I asked you to close your eyes, and then I said, the scarf I'm wearing is white, and you didn't believe me. You said, no, it's green. You can tell me all you want. It's not white. You don't believe me. It's a lie. Whether I'm telling you what God knows or thinks or speaks or whether it's my own, you know, words or thoughts. I, I You know, that's just the way the devil is and the people who follow the devil or who are deceived by the devil. And that's the second lie, is that the devil's a deceiver. He either wants you to believe he doesn't exist so he can get you to believe anything, or, um, you know, you believe him. You don't believe the truth, okay? Like I said. And then another version of that is, and I recently had this done to me, and I have to be careful in a sense because I was just in court on May 29th, and I'll give an update on that. But that lie is that a person can, you know, purport to think they know what's in your heart or your head and say, you know, I falsely accuse you. And in my case, it's led to, you know, multiple false arrests where they say, no, this is why this person did that, or this is what this person was thinking, in, in particular me. I'm like, you don't know what's in my heart and head. You're just lying. You know, you're being deceived, or it's really usually a, a free will choice that the person makes. They know what they're doing. They know that they're lying. Um, and like I said, I've had that happen to me. So those are the two spiritual lessons that really come into play uh, a lot with me these days. Uh, and even in the life of my daddy, um, because even though he's gone, and you can probably see the bags under my eyes, I still don't, I get nightmares at night, which I began a lot when he was in trouble and reached out to me for my help and just for the things that we both, you know, enjoy together, which is who God is. He's the God of love, life, joy, and peace. And I certainly, because of my daddy, always try to follow the commandments, especially thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal, and even certainly honor thy father and mother because God knows, and I, I know my mom knows how much I adored her. I mean, I'll never love anybody more than my mom or dad, but my, I only got to know my mom in 21 years, but I had got to know my daddy 63, three times more, and nobody loved me more than my dad, and I didn't, and will never love. And, you know, even if I get a wife one day, I'll never love anybody more than my daddy or more than my mom. But certainly, um, here on earth, you know, beside those, you know, my mom and dad is my work, but 
always I always have to love God the Father first and that's what I love most about my God my daddy who was my God on earth he was my earthly father I don't exist his other children don't exist people in his life family quote unquote or other friends might not even exist if it wasn't for the nature of my daddy who before my mom died on October 17th at 7 p.m. 1982 my dad I mean he had a house not that you know the material possessions are, are the main thing my dad knew that but he had his house he had aut automobiles and, you know a large amount of wealth um, you know he had a clean cr criminal record he had a business um, he had his mind he was you know had an unbelievable mind a great memory high intelligence comedic charismatic I mean all the blessings that I think I have I, you know were bequeathed and given to me by the Lord God above and by my dad and that's what I was created to do, is to preach and to play things also my dad taught me to do. And preach could be writing or video or music or, or you know, something, you know, any kind of media. Or, and certainly play, whether it's sports or some kind of game. And, and But I was also made in my dad's image. I adored my mom, but, you know, she was made in a certain way. And my dad, I'm genetically just like him. Um, but together they were a perfect union. And I was blessed to be, the, again, their firstborn son. And... My dad, you know, created me to be his extension here on earth and, and to serve him and not to overpower him uh, like other people, you know, have come into his life and tried to do. And even some of his own, whether they know they're doing it or not, again, whether they're just being deceived or careless or they just, you know, are making that ungodly choice to overpower. You know, we're, we're just serve. I'm here to serve my daddy. Um, you know, again, I own my life uh, and he, you know, he was my God here on earth. So, as I said, with him passing two months ago, I, quite honestly, you can, again, I don't know if I mentioned about the backs under my eyes. I don't sleep either. I'm depressed to the point of sometimes being suicidal or just angry to the point of, you know, just, again, I can't kill anybody. Uh, and I get that includes myself. I don't kill critters. I don't eat critters. I mean, you know, you just can't do that. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I have a God I have to serve. I want to get to heaven. Um, you know, so again, I can't do that, but I can't, you know, it's, it's very hard knowing how my dad, and I'm not saying by whom, because I'll get to this court thing, but my, how my dad was suffered in pain and was victimized his final years of his life and how all he wanted to do was relocate and be with me and the God that we serve that I might have mentioned is the God of love, life, joy, and peace. And that's all he and I wanted. And I just know that my dad, his final words in a sense, are just, I want to live and be happy. You know, and I know even my dad, because of things that were happening to him, he became even suicidal. And my dad was never that way. Never, never. Uh, and my dad was deeply depressed. And my dad was, you know, righteously angry. There's a good angry. And there was a righteous version of hatred also. He hated his life. He hated where he lived. He hated the people, you know, in his life, except for me. Um, many of the people, you know, betrayed him and rejected him and disrespected him and used and abused him. And he realized that as he got older, you know that he was misled by certain people and that his life was you know he wasn't loved for who he was as a human being he was loved for his money and because a certain person or people and their supporters wanted you know power and control and would cultishly coerce and control my daddy and uh, you know my daddy was never demented or had Alzheimer's although that was falsely spoken about him so this person could weaken him and others could control him my daddy was brainwashed I mean as I told him many times and he knew um, and I have, uh, you know, evidence of all of this, whether it's spoken word, messages from him, you know, uh, phone calls, uh, you know, left, you know, when the phone was left open, open conversations I wasn't supposed to hear, you know, behind the scenes things, whether it's video, written evidence. And my daddy, again, he was brainwashed. He didn't have Alzheimer's. He didn't have dementia. There's a big difference, as I was saying, between forgetting something and not knowing something. You know, if somebody, you know, like a prisoner of war, you know, of which my dad was a Korean War veteran, or if you're, you know, in a cult, you know, and I've studied those and worked with infamous cult members. Um, one who was just recently released, a nice woman named Leslie Van Houten, worked with, with the Manson uh, family. And that's why, you know, I've studied these things, and nobody have I studied her no more than my dad, so I know when he's being victimized and hurt and what's happened to him and what's happening to me now is like I said an extension of him and while I try not you know I can't sleep or I have nightmares or I get depressed or angry you try not to kill yourself you know you don't want to do that but sometimes the devil he just overwhelms you as he did when you know I went to save our family home and 
and was victimized as was my dad there and knew I couldn't save it and spent five hours you know trying not to dangle from a noose and under the worst thunder and lightning storm I ever heard in my life and I know that was God at war with the devil for life because God loves life that's what he you know that's who he is he's a creator that's why I can never be greater or honor my dad you know more than anybody on earth because God said be fruitful and multiply he's God the Heavenly Father he's not God in it he's not God a she God you know or some invisible you know non you know in a sense masculine being he's God the Father just like we're taught to love and honor our earthly fathers you know or for those who are father figures to us and that's why so many times you see women whether it's a wife or it's a politician and they try to you know or if it's a sister or somebody they try to you know or if it's in the workplace, you know, they not all women, but you know, they try to get equality, and then that equality becomes, you know, empower self empowerment and becomes overpowering, and that's not the way God made creation. You know, He's Father God for a reason. Primarily, He's Father God because He knows that women are the weaker sex and the weaker gender, and that He's there for that. Women need God, need a father figure, need a good and holy God more than they need, you know, another woman, and certainly more than they even need their own brothers or husbands or or fathers. I mean, he's God, the perfect heavenly father. So having said that, you know, um, it was my daddy and me and he came to me. And again, I was in court on May 29th, still in defense of him, still trying to have a life with him where somebody took out a protection order against me and my dad, which he didn't know about, he didn't want, and everything in it was unwarranted. Um, I was never made aware of it by him or, or the petitioner who even filed the order. Um, I was never informed by the court properly. I was, you know, received a call that from, said that it was coming from three different cities from a woman I never heard who said she's calling from a spam or scam number. So obviously I didn't answer the call. But apparently that was supposed to be me appearing in court, appearing in court and the, you know, order was granted in default. And I've been fighting it every day for three years, at least not every day, sorry, six days a week, which I work, um, 96 hours a week, six days a week trying to you know get it overturned or get the truth told because nothing in it was true everything in it was fraudulent and fictitious because a person again with their love of money um, their desire for power and control um, things they've always done had me falsely accused and arrested in the past were trying was trying to do it again simply basically because my daddy wanted to get away from this person he knew he was being used and abused and, and that is his finances decreased the mistreatment of him increased and as his finances didn't decrease this person's finances increased so I did what I wanted to do because he's my daddy I love him I enjoy him he was my, he was my life he is still my life he's my God on earth and I loved it in his life more than me and I would have and probably should have as I might have mentioned this gone to jail in his defense instead of thinking that you know I can't help you dad if I'm in jail I can't be with you and I you know if I'm dead and in jail you're gonna be here on your own and I'm gonna miss being by your deathbed or at your funeral or at your barrow which you know in the end I was disallowed from being at I couldn't even go to my own daddy's funeral and his burial because of what was done to me in the legal system and by a government who you know every step of the way has been as ungodly as it gets I mean I you know they say justice delayed is justice denied well that's certainly the truth in my case and I can see the spiritual things that are going on here and the lies and the injustice and the unfairness um, I mean if we see it in our government I was in court on, on May 29th the same day Donald Trump was former President Trump was in you know court for his proceeding and made a statement today just like I'm making ironically you know or not coincidentally, coincidentally two months after you know the, the day of my daddy's death and again, my dad came to me for my help. He was begging me for help. He wanted, we wanted to enjoy life together and enjoy peace and have love together. Uh, and again, that was denied him. And, and again, it was denied me. And but not only by this person who I'm not, you know, by name to mention, and was even actually told I perhaps even can't, you know, share, you know, uh, recordings of my father crying out because to the court, I guess, in this person, I was told to not say anything negative or disparaging about this person and that it's somehow it's harassment, which is incredible. I mean, my First Amendment rights, my right to defend my daddy, um, my right to tell the truth, all of that is told it's harassment. Um, and again, when the order was filed, I didn't know, my dad didn't know, it's totally unwarranted. It said I was a violent and dangerous threat to this person who I've only seen five times in my life in person in the last 10 years, always avoided, and every time she came into, you know, in, into 
interact with me. It was negative between me and my daddy. And she wasn't even invited in a sense. And she came in screaming and negative and threatening. But I don't want to say who it was. I, again, I'm not supposed to say who it was. And, and that's what they did. And then falsely wanted to, you know, accuse me and have me arrested. And again, I've never even hugged the person, kissed the person. I, I never shook the hand, person's hand. I never even touched the person by accident. I've always tried to avoid them because I know how costly it is financially and emotionally and every other way and how dangerous and deadly it can be. So I always try to avoid this person. But again, I'm told I'm a dangerous threat and a violent threat to that person and only that person, but also my own daddy. Really? My own daddy? I adored my daddy. I never threatened my daddy like that. I never, you know, pointed a gun at my daddy. I never threw, you know, pointed or threw a knife at my daddy. I never threatened his life. I never hit him. He's my daddy. I adored him. I would never do that. Even when I was, you know, drug and alcoholic, uh, drug addict 33 years ago, which thank God I haven't done any of those. I don't even eat meat. I won't even kill an animal. Nothing. I won't eat fish. I won't eat anything. Nothing. I mean, you know, all the, these, you know, what that, you know, writing that down, you know how disrespectful, offensive, irreverent, insulting that is? What a lie to be told about and to keep my dad and me apart. I mean, my daddy, all he wanted to do was relocate, and when that he wanted to relocate, that's when even more of the problems began. You know, when he wanted to just separate, because a person, you know, their God, if they don't serve the true, real God in heaven, they serve the God on earth, which is the God of money, or themselves. And I, again, I don't believe it, you know, a lot of these people, this person and her supporters, or their supporters, I'm sorry, were, you know, deceived. They made free will choices. Free will choices to live and love money. To want to have power and control and to overpower my dad and the only person who would you know should have died in his defense although i couldn't die before my dad because that would have broken his heart and again i'd rather be in jail today and have my dad be alive than to be free which i'm really not and have my daddy be gone i still have to have this black curse over my head of this false order I have to go to court on May 29th and told I'm harassing somebody if I say something negative about them or something disparaging in word or I post it on social media or, or something, record something when all the while this person's actions, what are they doing to me? What did they do to my daddy? I have recordings. I have overheard conversations. I have a recording of a person. I mean, you've heard the expression where there's smoke, there's fire. I have a recording of a person after my dad spent millions of dollars on this person, gave this person everything they ever wanted, just like he gave you know, his children a lot of things throughout their life. This person threatening my dad with food deprival, saying my dad was cheap and doesn't contribute? No wonder he was angry in the message and said, what do you want from me? I don't do anything. You do everything. You go everywhere. All I do, I can't, all I want to do is eat. That's all I get to do. And now you want, you know, what do you want off of me? The skin off my bones? And here's my dad, rotting in the ground. Losing the very skin he was afraid he was going to lose two months after he's gone. And I can't get help. He can't get help. I tried every agency in the government. Then I've got to face a judge who says, you know what? You're going to have to go to court. You're going to have to go to trial. You, not only am I being accused of breaking the order, an order which should never have been filed in the first place, which was wrought, but like I said, with you know fictitious frauds and false accusations, and again, this person or a per, you know, there was a person who had me falsely arrested three times already. Falsely accused me of stealing a, a truck. Falsely accused me of stealing videotapes. My dad gave me to borrow. Went so far as to not only want to threaten to have me thrown in jail, but to sell my own grave plot next to my mom and dad for eight hundred and twenty-five or eight hundred and seventy-five dollars. Not only would they lie and do that, something as devilish as that, but also want to profit off of it. Like my dad said, there's certain people who, you know, all they love is money. And the dad, my dad said this person was the greediest person he's ever known. And I know the same thing. I held out five dollars once to my dad. This person came storming out of his house ten yards away and grabbed the money right out of my hand. Any money that goes to him is mine. I mean, I gave my dad money, he put $500 to hide in his Bible, the next day it's gone. I gave my dad money, a person came up to him and said, you know what, you've got to give me that money because you have Alzheimer's, you'll forget, you'll forget, you'll for, sorry, you'll forget where it is. I gave my dad $5,000 in the last two to three years, my life savings, and this person accused me of stealing my dad. This person accused me of, of wanting to steal my dad's identity 
and stealing from my dad, and that's why I wanted to know my dad. Steal his identity. He gave me his name at birth, Mark Anthony DeBello, Anthony Francis DeBello. He loved, he trusted me to give me his name at my birth. I've honored his name my entire life. I spell his name correctly. I don't spell it incorrectly like this person has done. And, this, and my dad and his children, his own children, how can you listen to the, a message of a human being, whether it was my dad or not, a promoter, a Korean War veteran, a father, a, a generous, loving man, an elderly man, a weak man, and if this man did have dementia and was senile, which he wasn't, because that was disproven by a doctor. My dad was so proud the day, you know, the doctor said, you know, Tony, you're in the top 5% of your, you know, mental group, your age group mentally. You don't have Alzheimer's, and I know my dad didn't. But this person says, again, where there's smoke, there's fire. A person says to a person, you're so cheap, goddamn cheap, you don't contribute for anything, just to gain access to his last bank account. I mean, it's a social security where he kept the social security. And you know what? My dad invited me into his life and gave me a social security number. You know why? He begged me. Mark, you have my name. Aurelius, he would call me. Marcus Aurelius. He was, that was my, his nickname for me. Call social security. Tell me how much I'm getting. I don't see any of my money. Tell me, please. I can't, I'm not allowed to have $5 in my pocket. Please tell me, where's my money going? He tries to get a check. Somebody takes the check from the mailbox, so he doesn't get it. So he wanted it deposited into his bank. It goes to his bank, the person gets to the bank, they take it out of there. He says, Mark, get it sent to my, you know, tell me the amount and get it sent to my, my home instead. I went back and forth with that, it must have been six times. He gave me a social security, I didn't steal his identity, I didn't steal his social security number, he gave it to me. He wanted me to help know where his check was going. Sorry, the battery says it's getting low. And he wanted to, me to sign up legally for sports accounts so he could play the horses or play football, something we love to do together. In fact, I overheard a conversation. I won't say who said it, but it, my dad left the phone off the hook accidentally and a person is flailing the knife at him like I heard him, this person do before. And this person is saying to my dad, which I never knew this person used this kind of language because I guess they concealed it, which I know they did and my dad could later confess that they did, sit the F down, shut the F up, using that word. You're not getting any effing of my money, as when my dad begged, he just wanted 250 of his own money, $250 to play the horse. You're not getting effing, of two, you know, losing $250 of my money. Sit the F down, you're lucky I effing feed you. You do, you do right, you'll get fed. You don't, your effing won't. Talking to my dad like that. How do you let anybody talk to anybody like that? If he was demented or senile, is that how so you're supposed to take care and talk to somebody, really? And even though he wasn't those things, who do you, whether you're a man or a woman, husband, wife, brother, sister, how do you talk to somebody that way? And I found out later that $250 was the amount my dad wanted to just play, so, you know, play the horses, which he liked to do on Saturdays, or play football like he liked to do on Sundays. A former multimillionaire gave all his money primarily to one person, and people support this person against me and tell me I'm a thief, falsely accuse me of being a scammer or stealing from my own daddy? Really? I mean, as I say to people, God, go to hell. I don't say it to them. I say it to this evil spirit in them that has them deceiving others, deceiving the government, the government hurting people, hurting me, hurting my daddy. All he wanted to do was enjoy his life. His words, I can hear them. I just want to be happy. I just want to be alive and be happy. He hated his life. He hated where he lived. He hated who he was with, except when he was with me and one of his friends. And periodically, maybe, maybe, maybe one of his children, but they all disappointed him. They all betrayed and rejected him. He has a wealthy millionaire, multi-millionaire second son who he completely feels rejected and betrayed by, just like I've been. Sure, he's helped in past, you know, and supported in the past, but he supported others in deadly, you know, devilish destruction more. Certainly, I know because he's an atheist, and you know, his money is God is his money, and he never believed me, never always distrusted me. I understand that, and and the other ones, his daughters who didn't like me, or you know, they had this empowerment thing, or because of their you know, uh, lifestyles, or because they're you know, they have to be the boss or because I tell the truth, or because I, I tell right from wrong. And I can be righteously angry, and I can be righteous, you know, righteously depressed, which is, you know, would be considered mourning. And I can be righteously hate things that are done to the innocent, and untruths, and injustices, and unfairness. And, you know, where there is no love, and it's, or it's deceptive, or there, there is, you know, 
like I said, there is no joy. There is no peace. There's nothing but war. And there is no life. My daddy's life. I'm the only reason, again, I can stay alive is because I have to fight to keep what my dad created in me alive. Everything he did, he, he taught me. He was my greatest teacher next to the father he served, which was father, his, you know, my grandpa and his dad and Father God. I mean, that's why I was created, to preach however I do it and to play, whether it's sports or games, and to be my dad's incarnation, my dad's furtherance of this life. He, he, I, only, I told him, Pop, a lot of times I feel like I was a robot. You made me enjoy the things I enjoyed. That's what you taught me. To, you know, that's what you exposed me to. That's what you blessed me with. I act like you. I think like you. I mean, I can't help it, and I don't want to help it most of the time. Of course, I try to be a better person than my dad was. That's why you have a son, you know, so he can, you can teach him. He can be better. He can, do, you know, improve upon what you, you know, the, the fruits of this earth that you laid when God said, be fruitful and multiply. And even to my own mommy, who I loved and respected. But the irreverence and the disrespect to, and the, you know, the, the sinfulness and the ungodliness shown to my mom and my dad and me. So again, I'm in court May 29th. Again, I guess I've got to go to trial. I guess I'm still harassing somebody. I guess I broke an order if I, God forbid, geez, I, I got my last message from my dad two months before he died. Maybe if, you know, if I played that message, I don't know, maybe I guess that's considered, you know, breaking this order. I'm not allowed to have a life with my dad, communicate with my dad. And that's all my dad and me wanted. I didn't, you know, I didn't love my dad for money. My dad's life was priceless. I loved my dad freely, the way he loved me. We didn't need to have power and control over anybody, and if we did, he had power over control and control over me, which was his God-given right, and that's okay. But the love of money to destroy lives and to risk a life to have somebody again falsely accused and falsely jailed so somebody can profit and to have supporters that, that endorse that and condone that no wonder what I saw President, former President Trump talking about in the judicial system I know it, I've experienced it it's unbelievably ungodly, and you can hear the passion in my voice, and now I'm a little more on the agitated side than I was on the tearful side, because I, like I said, I played, didn't, tried recording this message, which I'm going to complete here in three minutes or less, and cried my, I cried so many tears. I adored, I miss my daddy, he should be alive. I shouldn't have this cloud and this curse over me. I shouldn't have, you know, to live my life this way and wor worrying about imprisonment losing my you know I gave my dad all my wealth practically losing my I mean homelessness all of it I can't work I can hardly eat sometimes I had you know I told my daddy I'd go in the you know if he was gonna suffer with fears which he suffered if he's gonna suffer with depression and you know because he's being oppressed and 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 being you know in many ways tortured, I won't say by who, and being berated and demeaned and disrespected. I'll be there for you, Daddy. Now my daddy's gone, and, the, and I'm still apparently under this, you know, this person needs protection from me, and I'm harassing people, and I need to, you know, be accountable for, you know, trying to, or perhaps having communication or relationship with my dad over the last, I guess they told me, 2022 I was disallowed from having any communication with my dad or t or even talking about any of these overheard phone calls my dad you know uh, uh, you know my dad's life being threatened and I know it's evil I've called every agency in the su under the sun no it's not true that's oh really I know what I heard I'm not demented I'm not delusional I don't have Alzheimer's, and neither did my dad. When I didn't know there was a protection order, I'm talking to my dad. He's, t you know, I'm interviewing him in Tampa, where he loved being with me. He's singing. He's happy. He's talking about what he had for breakfast, as, as you know, clear-headedly as he what he had for dinner the night before, to events from 65 years ago in detail. He didn't have Alzheimer's, as I told him, as he knew there's a big difference between forgetting something and not knowing something. He was brainwashed. It's not hard to understand and see what perspective side is. 
Now, I'm not saying who did it to him. I'm just saying it was done to him. And it wasn't, sure as hell wasn't done by me. Anyway, this message was not the way I wanted it to come out totally like this with this agitation and anger. Although it can be, it is righteous indignation and anger. And you, the same, like I said, can be said for ha hatred and even righteous, righteous depression, which is otherwise considered mourning. And again, the hatred, the hatred of injustice, lies, of, of death and destruction. I mean, what's more priceless than human life? And my daddy's life, who lived an honorable and a good life, didn't deserve any of the things that happened to him over the last three decades. And nor do I, simply because I want to love and honor and, and defend and be and help my dad and be like and be with him, and even now defend his memory. So to everybody or anybody, God forgive you, although none of you will apologize and none of you do. Like Jesus was crucified by his government, my father was being crucified, died on Easter Day. And as I told my dad, whether it was Samson with Delilah or King David or John the Baptist, Many a man has gone down at the hands of a woman or females, and I'm not saying who, it could even be his daughters, just like I've had, you know, to survive. Even though, again, it could be my own wrongful, just like my dad. You make wrong choices or you get tricked, trapped, or tempted, and next thing you know, you're enslaved and you're stuck. And we take accountability for that. But there's also, you know, like I said, the continuation of life, life of my dad and me and my, even my mom, to live freely and joyfully with peace and love, not a sla enslaved, oppressed, used and abused, controlled or coerced, and not falsely accused and falsely imprisoned. So I can continue my work, my dad's work, my mom's work, and even their children's work, and even the work of others, and even the work of those in government, former presidents, and perhaps a future president. So there's no irony to me that I was in court on May 29th, and I'm also recording this message as I heard a message this morning on May 31st, 2024. With a passionate, prayerful hope and prayer that God prevails, although in the end, I think I only have one choice. And I told my dad, and he and I both knew, and I'm not saying I'm Jesus. I know my dad was more of a Christian believer than I am. I, there was a day when I was more so. But again, with my dad dying on Easter, I have my doubts. But all that aside, Jesus was crucified, and his followers, his disciples, they were all crucified. One even upside down, apart from one, John, who was allowed to go to the island of Patmos it was called where he just either I don't know if he died in peace died in his sleep perhaps he was murdered or crucified there but my daddy died on Easter Sunday only 24 hours after an ambulance was called and I have no information on why the ambulance was called what the cause of death was no information, and I know quite certain no investigation or autopsy was done. I have recordings of my dad, fearful from everything, from being kicked, to being punched in the stomach, to being poisoned, to being drugged. I've heard it myself. So two months since the day my dad died, I'm making this recording because every day is, you know, the next day you could be dead. And I, again, I just record, I preach, I give, share my dad's voice, which is trying to be silenced, my voice, which is trying to be silenced, his life, my life, all for the glory of God the Father. God bless.